This is NDTV. And you're watching NDTV Hindu. Welcome, it's a Saturday night and you're watching all of the headlines now. I'm Evelyn Matthew. A perfect treat of news are heading your way. A new plush park for the bird watcher or the nature lover in you. While all efforts are on in neighbouring Karnataka to get a new head for the state. And the Indian Express has chugged its way into round three of the Australian Open. All this strung out for you with a cherry on top from Rehman's studios. So let's wait no longer. These are our top stories tonight. The city has a brand new eco park in Adyar. The chief minister christens it as Tolkapiar Punga. Vaiko calls the Coast Guard and the Indian Navy idle spectators at the recent attacks on our fishing. While the metro rail is on its track to completion, the commuters of the city fall victims to the mess and disorder it's leaving. Petrol, diesel, waste, Adam, boy, then I'm sorry, they waste. One hour, hour. The fake drugs make a comeback to the city. The CBC ID arrests five in connection with the production of a painkiller drug. And Rahman is out with his new music video. It's a number that didn't make it to the Ravanan album. Karnataka Chief Minister says that the governor is in a hurry to sanction his prosecution, but he will fight back legally and politically. The Congress and the BJP slug it out a day after the governor sanctions Yedurapa's prosecution. Maharashtra's Chief Minister promises action after Mumbai's Joint Commissioner of Police's mother owns a flat in the controversial Harsidi Heights. After reports emerged over Ganguly joining Team Kochi, sources say Kochi coach is not too keen on the Bengal Tiger. And Ruskin Bond pens a new role for himself, the author, on working in South Korean mouth based on history. I ought to be in a in a comedy or a, you know some working with Laurel and Hardy or something like that. You're not with serious actors. <laughs> Good evening, a belated opening. Nevertheless, it's finally here. The first phase of the Adyar Punga has been declared open by the Chief Minister. M. Karunayanadi has christened it as the Tolkop Kapiar Park. But the event around the ecologically sensitive wetland is all the more significant because the actual inauguration was to happen earlier this month by none other than the Prime Minister, Dr. Manmohan Singh. But with the political red signals and roadblocks of clearances obstructing its path, it was pushed till today. The Environment Ministry gave its go-ahead only last week. This project sprawling over 58 acres has been dubbed as a good carbon sink for the city and one that would help replenish groundwater. This has been described by the Deputy Chief Minister whose project this is. Now, with its official opening, apart from the biodiversity in the estuary that makes uh, this breeding ground, citizens too hope for a breath, uh, breath of fresh air from uh, this green cover. Meanwhile, there is a constant fear along the coastal stretch of Tamil Nadu after a bevy of attacks took its toll on Indian fishermen by the Sri Lankan Navy off late. And resounding those worries was MDMK's chief Vaiko who has asked for serious action and stern warnings to be sent out to Sri Lanka. During a meeting with the Prime Minister Manmohan Singh, Vaiko raised concerns over such attacks and alleged that the Indian Navy and the Coast Guard remained idle spectators, making no attempts to protect the fishermen from the state. In a memorandum to the Prime Minister, he has also said that the foreign policy of the UPA government on ethnic Tamil issue, the aids to Colombo and the Indian Navy's failure to act have caused unbearable resentment among the people of the state. The MDMK leader also alleged that uh, the Sri Lankan government, under the pretext of fighting the war against the LTTE, committed genocide against Tamils. In the one-on-one -on -one with uh, Dr. Singh, Vaiko then thanked the Prime Minister for the safe return of a city advocate who was allegedly detained by the Sri Lankan army when she went to the island nation even with a valid passport and visa. 
Meanwhile, the Coast Guard of the state has sent out a message of reassurance to the Chief Minister. The Inspector General of uh, the Coast Guard has said that they will take all measures to ensure the safety of Indian fishermen. This comes in the wake of incidents like yesterday's when about 60 fishermen claimed that they were being beaten up by Sri Lankan Navy's personnel while they were fishing between Kachatheva and Danish Kodi. Earlier this month too, a fisherman from the state was shot dead by the Sri Lankan uh, Navy then had denied the attack. So having taken over as uh, the Coast Guard commander in Tamil Nadu, this was my first call on the Chief Minister wherein uh, we also discussed the issue of uh, Sri Lankan firing on our Indian fishermen, wherein I have assured the Chief Minister, the Honorable Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu, that every step will be taken by the Coast Guard to ensure and enhance the patrolling in this area so that no such incident is repeated in future. Parallelly, the Coast Guard headquarters in Delhi, along with the Government of India, have uh, initiated actions to interact with the government of Sri Lanka to prevent any such incidents in future. Now, if the Chennai Metro Rail project was supposed to be a boon and ease traffic congestion in our city, it does not look like it's doing so now at least. Even as this hailed project knuckles down, the ongoing construction work has turned into a traffic stopper, with bumper-to-bumper -bumper rides being a common sight on that stretch. Our reporter Lokpriya visited one of those dense traffic corridors where the project is supposedly coming up. Chennai Metro Rail, dream project of the Tamil Nadu government and a promise of a world-class public transport facility may have put the commuters at inconvenience at least during its construction stage. This is the scene during rush hour time almost every day on the busy 100 feet road near Kasi Theatre. Seems familiar? Well, you have probably been stuck on this stretch between Coimbedu and Gindi often. Ever since the Metro Rail began its work, traffic in this busy stretch has only gotten worse. Not an inch of road space visible to the naked eye. Perhaps you need a magnifying glass to see a foot in front of you and a brave heart to navigate this ruthless stretch of thought while horns around you blare and swearing at fellow road users is common. First second. Tired for the long time before, only one day all the traffic in the town. Petrol, diesel, waste, and some body waste. One hour out of it. Both time out the valley for and the time to valley for way mudilla. The plight of commuters during night is no better. The so called 100 feet road is literally reduced to half its size with almost 30 percent of road space occupied by the barricades laid for Metro Rail project. This is Corridor 2 that runs over a distance of 22 kilometers and connects Chennai Central and St. Thomas Mount via Coimbedu. Some attempts at decongesting the traffic have been made. The traffic police have diverted both the heavy vehicles and the Mufusil buses at Dureswami Road near Vadapaini Junction. But that has helped only a little, since most roads here are narrow. Authorities say they are helpless and can only ensure effective monitoring of the traffic at ground level. The traffic police can regulate the traffic, but the cons we cannot remove the constraint of the narrow road space which is there because of this uh, project going on. So till this project is completed, some inconvenience definitely would be there by the, for the road users. Even as the city moves into top gear in infrastructure facilities, traffic experts say there are lessons to be learned from the Metro Rail project which will be useful when similar projects are planned in future and also suggest a viable solution that might just make some difference. Activity centers could be taken care of. Some of the, I think, the recreation visit like theaters and all say on the Londi Katila Corridor. Maybe we can think of changing the show timings and staggering the timings of the theaters so that it won't fall in the peak. Stuck in traffic, the man on the road waits for the traffic to move, hoping the rail will chug out on time and put him on the fast lane to home and work. In Chennai, Lokpriya, NDTV Hindu.
On to some national news now. Karnataka's Chief Minister B.S. Yadurappa is fighting back legally and politically. After a day of meetings with his cabinet and after the Karnataka governor sanctioned his prosecution on corruption charges, Yadurappa has hit back, as has his party, which says that the governor is acting like an agent of the Congress. NDTV's Maya Sharma has an exclusive meeting with the Chief Minister which was shortly quite Political back. developments happening thick and fast in Karnataka as the battle really between the governor and the chief minister continues joining us is Karnataka's chief minister, Mr. B.S. Yediyurappa. Sir, did the governor's decision to sanction prosecution take you by surprise? He had said he would do it, but after the 26th, were you surprised? I will welcome this. I have no objection for this uh, governor decision. Mm -hmm. Only thing is, he could have given an opportunity to explain everything. He could have sent the complaint copy also mm -hmm. without uh, giving any opportunity and even not sending the copy of the complaint. Mm -hmm. And he has taken his decision mm -hmm. and he is behaving like a Congress JDS agent. This hurt us. You, you feel he was in a hurry to do this? He was. 100 percent. Because he himself told us there are so many. Uh, important mm -hmm. things are involved in this. I must study whether I got this uh, 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 any right to mm -hmm. take any decision. This was the uh, press notice released recently. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, when we have taken the cabinet decision, mm -hmm. immediately rational mm -hmm. to take come to this decision. It shows his uh, urgency and also to just to please the Congress leadership in Delhi. No. You sounded upset that he did not give you a copy of the sanction order or a copy of the petition. Did this upset you? Definitely, madam. Not only that. Mm -hmm. Yesterday night, when our uh, principal secretary met the governor, yes. he refused to give the order copy mm -hmm. also. Mm -hmm. And he told to set, uh, uh, go and tell your chief minister, I am not going to give the copy. And up to Monday, mm -hmm. you go and let, the, let him take in the court. Is the way of uh, telling uh, this type of the things to the principal secretary of the chief minister? Is it a way? And calling uh, chief, uh, Karnataka chief minister as thief, never in the history in the, in the country, no uh, governor has spoke like this. Now, you have said that from the start that governor was giving trouble to your government. He seemed to want to give trouble to the government. Why would you think he would do this? He what would be come doing? here as a governor to see that Congress should uh, uh, somehow come to power. Because day by day, Congress is losing in Lok Sabha and Taluk Panchayat and Jilla Panchayat. So he wanted to indirectly help the Congress and also JDS party. He don't like Bharati Janata Party to be in power in Karnataka. That is the reason that he couldn't be able to achieve that mission. So now he has created so many problems. And I, I think his ambition is, he was telling so many times, Edirapaji, public atmosphere is very good, public support is very good. Why can't you dissolve the assembly? And you will get 140, 150 seats. Openly was uh, uh, told uh, three, four times. That means he wants to sit in this chair for three, four months, enjoy the power. That may be the reason. What would be your next step? The two lawyers have approached the court today. What is the next step for you legally? Uh, we will fight this issue both legally and politically. But there are clearly no laws of attraction between the state's law minister and the union law minister's line of thought on this issue. Virapa Moili says Governor Bharadwaj is, uh, was completely within his rights to do what he did. Governor is a constitutional authority. He is also a competent authority to sanction prosecution of the ministers and also the chief minister. Nobody can escape the rule of law. Corruption is on record. Nepotism is on record. That's why even the high command of the BJP at one time asked him to step down as the chief minister. Only on that ground. And of course, ultimately, the, Mr. Gadkari said, you know, he said, what he said, you know, the morally is not correct. What he has done is morally not correct. But actually, it is legally not correct. Meanwhile, the Union Home Minister P. Chidambaram has slammed the BJP for taking to the streets in Karnataka over the governor's go-ahead for Yadirapa's prosecution. In a statement, Chidambaram said, It is not the first time that the governor has given his sanction to prosecute a chief minister. I am disappointed that the BJP has taken to the streets. This is not correct and is totally unacceptable. The BJP knows that any person aggrieved by the order of the governor can seek legal remedies. Hence, it is my sincere hope 
that the BJP will advise its state unit to abide by the law. So now with all of this to and fro, what really happens next? Well, the petitioners' advocates will now go to the magistrate and launch their complaints against the chief minister. Then the magistrate will have to take a call. He may then order a probe or summon Yadirapa himself. This is Headlines Now on NDTV Hindu. Up ahead, she's got no doubles on Facebook, like on the silver screen. Watch Asin's virtual confession up on the other side.